The following is an exclusive presentation of Meet the Leaders, only on Optimum. We're your TV, phone, and internet company. Coming up on Meet the Leaders, what's the latest on the rebuild of Long Beach? Will it be a year-round destination? We'll find out. Meet the Leaders starts now. Hi, I'm Pat Halpin. Welcome to Meet the Leaders, the show getting you to the heart of local government right here and right now with Long Beach City Manager Jack Schneerman. I want to welcome you uh, to Meet the Leaders. Thank you, Pat. Good to um, see you. You're not a mayor. Nope. You're not a councilman. You're not a supervisor. So what do I call you, Jack or Mr. City Manager? I'll take Jack. <laughs> okay. uh, but yes, I, I am the city manager. So what is a city manager? I know they have that form of government in a lot of other places in this country, but it's not something that's typical here on Long Island or New York State. Right. Um, in other parts of New York State, it, it is common, but in around the country, it's common. But in Long Beach, we have a uh, city manager system, which is uh, the city council is elected, and then uh, the majority of the city council appoints a city manager with the uh, executive powers of a mayor mm -hmm. to run the day-to-day -day operations of government. As they're part-time city council members, um, they, they want somebody in city hall full-time making the trains run on time and um, you know, doing the work of the city. And what about as a, as a city? It's, uh, you know, we only have a couple of cities uh, on Long Island. Yours is one, Glen Cove is another. How does that, how does that differ, for example, from a town or a village? So we have two cities on Long, Long Island, us and Glen Cove, and we do function differently. And there are really advantages to being a city. And I think we saw that very much so um, after Sandy, mm -hmm. for example, in that in a city, um, we have our police department, we have our fire department, and all of our first responders were able to coordinate around one table and we're able to get things done quickly. And that has been a tremendous aid for us, both in the immediate emergency response and now the, uh, the long-term recovery for Sandy. Now, you, you are a municipal expert. You, were, uh, you worked in the town of Brookhaven, which is the largest uh, town. You can fit all of Nassau County in, yeah. in Brookhaven and still have room left over. Uh, could you imagine, I mean, you're, and, and, and Long Beach was slaughtered with Hurricane Sandy. I mean, you had 13 feet of water that went from the ocean all the way to the bay. I mean, it was basically, you know, destroyed. There wasn't one corner of Long Beach that wasn't affected by Sandy. Was, was being a city more effective in terms of responding to that? You said that. But how would it differ, for example, if you were, if you were a town in terms of marshalling those resources? Uh, well, it was absolutely um, critical for us um, to get everybody together and have one coordinated response. Right. And in a city, we're able to have everybody in one room, around one table, under one unified command. I mean, and as we grew yeah. in our emergency response mm -hmm. to include the state police, the National Guard, the Nassau County Police, um, and all of the other <laughs> emergency uh, folks that came I to mean, our you, aid, you, they you, all you worked. You had FEMA, you had the National yeah. Guard. You all had... under our command, whereas, uh -huh. you know, in a town, it's a bigger challenge right. in the sense that uh, the town doesn't have the same emergency response um, um, responsibilities that, uh, that a city does, number one. It's diffused uh, with the county, and a town also has different departments and elected officials, which don't always coordinate with each other. And so, you know, we had that advantage. We were able to make things happen quickly, and, and we really use that to our advantage. So your, your job as city manager, uh, by definition, is that, is that ultimately there is one person whose job it is is to, if you will, make the trains run on time, or, right. or in this case, make sure that all of those pieces come together and work effectively. Yes. That's the job of a city manager, and right. there's no ambiguity in right. that respect. We have clear lines of authority. Right. Um, the department heads and the police and the fire department are accountable to me, and I am accountable to the mm -hmm. city council very clearly, and, and they, of course, um, to the residents, and it all flows nice and neatly as a result. So, Jack, um, Hurricane Sandy, I want to bring you back to that day, that week, that, you know, the last year. Hurricane Sandy is bearing down on Long Beach. You're getting reports from all of the experts who are saying this looks like, you know, Long, yeah. Beach, Long Beach is in for something that they have never experienced or could imagine. Pick it up from there, and then let's talk about the recovery and where we are. Sure. Um, you know, we, we were preparing for quite a while before Sandy, and, you know, as much as you prepare, and I think the whole region found out that you can prepare all you want, um, but when the 300-year storm, com storm comes, you know, Mother Nature sort of laughs at you. Um, but we did have our ducks in a row. We had our 
um, our internal and our external communications um, locked down and prepared. We had our, our crews going out throughout the city and trying to button up our barrier island to the extent that it is physically possible um, to button up a barrier mm -hmm. island with a storm that size um, bearing down on us. And then we really focused on emergency response and, uh, mm -hmm. and then getting the resources into the city um, that we needed to get into the city in order to be effective. We continued with robocalls. We ordered a mandatory evacuation, um, which you know we, we see now are, uh, was not necessarily uh, heated. Folks right. are hardy in Long Beach right. um, it, and, and want to stay. Uh, everybody wanted to stay. Uh, the city council set a real priority on getting information out to the residents mm -hmm. was something that we did. But then immediately after the storm we, um, and during the night, we coordinated with uh, Nassau County Executive Mangano. We got uh, the National Guard in by morning, the state police in by morning. We declared, you know, virtually martial law. We put in a curfew, uh, and we had the state police and the National Guard assisting with, ev uh, with evacuation and also safeguarding people's homes to make sure that we were able to begin this recovery process in an orderly fashion as possible. We had all the ingredients for potential chaos, right? Mm -hmm. We had not only loss of power, water, sewer, um, you know, phone lines were down, cell phones weren't working, right. uh, it impacted 911 ability. And basically every first floor, you know, 13 the whole feet city. of water was, the ocean was met destroyed, the bay. met the bay. So, uh, you know, the highest point I'm told, like 13, 14 feet of water. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you had all the ingredients for chaos, and if we had not made those initial decisions and mm -hmm. got the initial things working in the right way, um, we would never have been able to begin a, a recovery in an orderly fashion. And as a result, we were able to, you know, we were very lucky. We saw no loss of life. We, we had an orderly uh, beginning. No, no, you're, no, it's more than lucky. I mean, lucky means I, something, you know, that guy could have hit me in a car as he flew through right. that intersection. I'm lucky I just delayed when the light turned green. But it, you would have lost life if you hadn't done all of the things that sure. you just described. We, but we, you know, the, the, the priorities that we established right. early in terms of public safety, coordinating with other levels of government, were, um, were very successful. We'll always be grateful uh, to the governor, to Governor Cuomo, to Senator Schumer, mm -hmm. and to County Executive Mangano for the things that they did working with us directly in the beginning and the level of resources we were able, we were able to bring in in the first 48 hours. Um, in order to have just a massive operation under a single unified Long Beach command in order to make things go. And that made all the difference. So after 48 hours, you've assessed the situation. You say, this is a lot worse than we ever imagined. Yeah. The rebuild begins. Right. Um, what, so we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to pick up where the rebuild begins. And, and how do you deal with the stuff that you immediately had to address, communications, sewer, electric, and simultaneously saying, OK, we've got to get this city back up on its feet. And you've done that in the last year. All right. of those things are going in parallel. So we'll have more with the city manager of Long Beach, Jack Schneerman, right after this break. Stay tuned. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Frank, did you touch the router? Not me. Are you sure? I didn't touch the router, Grace. I saw you by the socket. I think I would remember unplugging the router. Well, I can't connect. Not my fault. Can you check? I tell you, I didn't unplug anything. I'm going to call them. At Optimum, we know some problems are easy to solve. Dang it. When they prove a little more complex, we're here 24-7. You fixed it. No wonder more people choose Optimum Online than any other internet provider. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Hi, Meet the Leaders is here with City Manager of Long Beach, Jack Schneerman, and we've been talking about Long Beach after Sandy, and, 
And, and, and um, Jack, you were, you were talking about you know, what the response was during the storm and, and the things that you had to do. We kind of left it where you, know, you, had, you, had, you had two goals as, as a city. One is we got to get the basics operational right. ASAP. And then we have to begin thinking about and implementing and actually doing the things necessary to get this city operational. Right. Um, so pick it up with like what needed to be done, like what were the things that you needed to make sure you got done in the first two or three or four weeks before you could even get to the rest of what, sure. what, what, what was required? It really is the basics, right? You have to um, provide, you know, first of all, you have to provide some order, protection, direction in a crisis situation <laughs> like that. And, and we worked very hard on that to get daily information out. It was the priority of the city council to inform the residents every day, literally to go block by block, make sure flyers are going out. <laughs> Here's everything we know today because there was no technology um, at that point, right? We had, we had no technology in City Hall. We were hit so hard. We had, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, most phones were down. And so that was the initial challenge is getting uh, the information out and the obvious of getting the water and the sewer plant back up and running, getting power, uh, working with LIPA to get the power restored. We, we locked every, uh, all of LIPA, actually, uh, their folks, literally in City Hall um, for a few weeks on end and uh, right. didn't let them leave until they got the lights back on. And it was actually a model that worked uh, for us, rather than the simple yelling and screaming, just everybody embedded working together. Um, but during that time, you know, a few things happened. Really, the community came together in a way that was extraordinary. Um, but but at one point, I mean, right at the beginning, you're basically telling everybody in the community, you have to leave Long Beach. Yes. You have to leave. We have no power. Right. We have no water. It was unsafe. We, we can't, it was unsafe. It was unsafe. And that's why it was so important to lock down people's homes right. and to have them protected by the state police and the National Guard so that people could uh, safely evacuate and so that the work that needed to be done, Mount Sandy needed to be removed from the streets. What do you mean Mount Sandy? I, I look, <laughs> I, I'll never forget watching on News 12, the, the helicopter going over, I said, wait a second. This was a water event. This wasn't a snow event. You right. had mountains of sand. It looked like looked, a blizzard of sand. Like, right. It was a blizzard of sand through the streets. Some places 12 feet high. Uh, it, it was um, it was incredible and, and, and dramatic and, and the kind of thing that you had to see it to believe it. Um, and and that had to get remo removed from uh, from the streets and going down in order to get folks down the streets. But what took hold was neighbors helping neighbors. That you know the the community rallying cry was bruised not broken and it was really amazing the way the community came together the way everybody worked together to help dig each other out and and, and get things moving and during those early days you know, everybody got together mm -hmm. and the city council really helped set a priority to rebuild the city the right way stronger smarter and safer and that has been the watchword uh, ever since so we've now been in this both um, physical and we've we're still in a fiscal recovery we've been doing that now uh, for the last uh, 15 months or so. Um, and every day um, there's an incredible challenge and, and we're working f to go forward as, as a united community. So you get, you, you, you get the basics going again and, 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 and FEMA is coming in with all of their experts, the state's there with their experts. You know that you know, Congress is delaying the Sandy money, but eventually right. they do that. You know you're gonna get money. How do you make sure that that's being spent wisely? You know, the, the goal is builder, better, more resilient. Yep. Well, we, we've established some, some clear priorities. The city council has really made it clear um, that you've got to do the things as a barrier island that make it safe and smart to be on a barrier island. So what island. are so, some of those things that you... So that means protect ourselves on the beach side of the city. Right. Um, so we've got a fully funded Army Corps of Engineers project to build dunes, to build them the right way. Um, and to really protect the city on the on the beach side, on the bay side, where the city uh, has flooding more often uh, than even than the beach side, of course, um, we're now going to be protecting the city for the first time. We have a, a variety of things that we've put into the capital plan. We're working um, with FEMA, with mm -hmm. the state, um, to do some more, you know, the bigger picture like protections. Uh, we've got not only um, an expansion of bulkheading, mm -hmm. um, we've got tide flex, what's called tide flex valves coming in um, and expanded. We've got, um, we've applied for um, literally floodgates to close off our canals in the event of a storm. We're very thankful that Governor Cuomo mm -hmm. has come through for us uh, with some, uh, some flood walls 
um, on the north side of the city to the tune of $13 million. That's going to be tremendous in protecting the bay side of the city. And so the theory is if you protect the beach side, you mm -hmm. protect the bay side and fight to make sure um, that the residents get what they need to do their homes right, to raise their homes mm -hmm. and, and go through that process, um, then we're a good, safe place to be. We're a good investment. And in fact, now becomes the very right time to invest in a place like Long Beach. That's interesting. You know, that's what I was thinking as you describe it. As I said, wow. Uh, you, that, 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 that makes all the sense in the world. It's actually happening. So these just right. are not plans that sit on a shelf right. until the next storm comes and say, why didn't they do it? Um, I mean, I have to ask you, had, uh, you know, years ago, the Army Corps had said, yes. you got to build those dunes. And there were a lot of people in Long Beach that didn't want to see that happen, and it didn't happen. Uh, would it have made a difference, or would, or would you have been flooded by the bay anyway? Um, it would have made a tremendous difference, and yet there still would have been flooding by the right. day. Remember, these are storm reduction projects, so we don't spend a lot of time, um, I think, looking back at right. you know how fa past administrations you know failed to protect the city. We we stepped up right away after the storm and said, doing nothing's no longer an option. Right. We've got to do something. We've got to do it right. And we got everybody together, and we have that fully funded federal plan. We're so thankful for Senator Schumer mm -hmm. to come to our aid in fighting for that. And so now we know we will have good protection. Remember, there's no such thing as right. overall protection, right? You, right. you plan, you do the, everything you can, you take action, and uh, Mother Nature laughs, as you say. But um, as a barrier island, it is absolutely critical for us to do these things. And so we're not, we're not doing planning and thinking and sort of hemming and hawing. We're, we're taking the action well, needed to um, to get these things and you done. have and, and and speaking of doing things one of the things that that you did I think in a remarkable amount of time was to was to design and build that boardwalk now that became a symbol but that boardwalk is more than a symbol yeah it was important to the city and to the residents to get things back up and running right. um, and critical for our economy uh, to get back up and running our businesses rely on the revenue and we couldn't have we you know we faced down a situation going into last summer where we could have had a multi-year economic downturn right. storefront shuttering loss of tax base which puts the onus on the residential taxpayers in terms of increases at the exact wrong time because when they're recovering. For, because for a lot of your businesses that time from Memorial Day to Labor Day right. perhaps into September it's their lifeblood it, is, is when they it's make their, their money. It is their Christmas season if you will. Exactly so it was critical for us to do everything possible to help our businesses right. which also helps our own homeowners because our businesses are our homeowners in Long Beach so um, what we're able to do is get a stronger, smarter, safer boardwalk designed with incredible community input um, and built mm -hmm. all in one year, um, as well as uh, have a marketing campaign to advertise that the city is open for business. So, you know, we, we think back, we had right. the, the New Jersey Stronger Than the Strong campaign when everybody had stuck in their heads. We had the New York campaign. And then we had a third marketing campaign in the region, the Little Long Beach campaign starring our hometown hero, Billy Crystal, and it did what we needed it to do. It helped save our summer season <clears throat> so that we can continue this recovery in the right way going forward um, with a beautiful new boardwalk that is best in the region. And it was the most significant public project in the region, fully funded at no cost to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great, and it's strong, and, and it, it's exactly what the residents asked for, delivered on time and uh, under budget. Well. Again, that's a credit to the, the city council and to your team. We're, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to ask you, five years from now, what's Long Beach going to look like? So we'll be back in 90 seconds. Don't go anywhere. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Frank, did you touch the router? Not me. Are you sure? I didn't touch the router, Grace. I saw you by the socket. I think I would remember unplugging the router. 
Well, I can't connect. Not my fault. Can you check? Tell you, I didn't unplug anything. I'm gonna call them. At Optimum, we know some problems are easy to solve. Dang it. When they prove a little more complex, we're here 24-7. You fixed it. No wonder more people choose Optimum Online than any other internet provider. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Television station? No, no, we don't, we don't. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders here with Jack Schneerman, the city manager of the city of Long Beach. And, and Jack, we, we, you know, we, we've talked about the things that have happened in the last year and there, you know, and there are a variety of things. That, but let, let's go back to that marketing campaign. Now, Billy Crystal is a hometown guy. He yeah. is Long Beach, he, I don't care, he, he has, he, he has never gone Hollywood. He is Long right. Beach. Uh, but, but people like Billy Crystal came forward and said, you know, what can I do to help? Right. As, as Billy would say, he, he moved out to, to California in the, uh, the late 70s, but he never left, and he always has the sand in his shoes, and, and that's the saying in Long Beach. And once you have it, it it's, it's forever. Right. But that campaign was really important for, for a variety of reasons. Tell us why. Well, it was absolutely critical for us to uh, do everything in our power to help our businesses get back open, cut through the red tape, mm -hmm. and get all the money that they needed in order to open. So that, w that was part of it. Um, but it was also convincing them that there was going to be a summer season that was worth it for them to open for, and convincing people yeah. who had seen the devastation on TV that Long Beach was a good place for them to come back and spend their summer to avoid this potential you know, real economic catastrophe uh, that would have taken years and years and years to recover from. So we, we got over that hurdle. We had two major threats mm -hmm. that, w you know, without um, getting over these hurdles, a recovery wouldn't have been possible. The first was the public safety one in the first 48 hours after the storm, and the second was the economic catastrophe going into the summer, and we were able to avoid sort of both of those big, big, big trouble spots. You know, getting back to the first 48 hours, when you talked about power being out, that means that things like not only are your phones not working, everything else not working, but your sewage plant and your water plant's not right. working. How did you get temporary power to get those things operational? Because those are big consumers right. of power. It's not, you're not going to do this with a typical generator. Yep. Well, in the middle of the night when, you know, phones were flickering, so to speak, and the floodwaters uh, were high, um, in our emergency operations center, which I use the term loosely, is we, we don't have a, a, a we haven't had a fully you know operational center in in, in, in Long Beach. We at that point we're really operating by flashlight. Uh, you know, a couple key calls got through. Um, we were able to speak to Senator Schumer, who did something incredible. He he reached out to the CEO of Caterpillar out in Nebraska, and got a um, tractor trailer size um, generator to restart our water sewer plant. And we spoke to the uh, to the county executive to make sure that there was a, sub uh, a, a very substantial National Guard presence mm -hmm. on the ground by morning to ensure an orderly uh, second phase evacuation and uh, and help folks get the, also the help that they needed at that time. So it was just you know there was some key help in the beginning there. Okay, so let's talk about projects in the works. Yes. Um, so going forward, you know the vision that the city council mm -hmm. has laid out is one of resiliency to take us from an unprotected barrier island mm -hmm. to a real model of resiliency, <clears throat> leveraging our assets to rebuild the city in the right way. So that means that you know, not only do we have um, hardened critical infrastructure, and in some places not putting things you know, along the seashore, uh, as, as Governor Cuomo put out in his plan last week mm -hmm. very smartly, don't put it <laughs> along the shore and leave it unprotected. That just doesn't make any sense, right? right. So um, either move it or, put, or, or, uh, or make it protected. Um, and if so possible, you know, shrink the footprint to allow for good, smart um, redevelopment. And, um, you know, as we do our infrastructure, uh, we have an incredible amount of, of work to do with our infrastructure. Like what? Um, we got to rip up the streets and, and do piping underneath mm -hmm. the streets. And when we do so, um, 
replace it the right way, number one. Number two, put sort of um, flood, you know, do good drainage on top of it. The unsexy stuff, but to us in Long Beach, it means everything. It means avoiding three feet of water in the streets in a significant rainstorm. Right. Um, and then um, comes the fun part. Once you do that, you can, what you put on top of it, the traffic <coughs> safety, the complete streets, uh, you know, model, which the city council adopted uh, last summer. What does that mean? That means um, good walkable communities yeah. that, uh, uh, you know, attract young people. And we are one of the only places around Long Island that is attracting uh, new population um, to the city. <coughs> um, and, um, you know, that creates the atmosphere for economic development and, and really creating jobs and, and providing good jobs um, for folks in the city. And for us, that's critical because we have a, um, you know, mm -hmm. an influx of young professionals in the city and our biggest employer remains closed and that's the hospital. And so while there's so many good things going on, there's a lot of, you know, real gritty, um, uh, critical work to be done. Mm -hmm. And that's fighting f to get everybody the resources they need to get back in their homes, which the city council has put as a top priority, of course. And the New York Rising program, obviously, uh, the success of that will be critical but to the that, city but in that, the future. But that takes time. I mean, you did people like, like your city. You did the. Yep. You, you were doing triage. Exactly. So it's the same thing for homeowners. So now it's like, okay, you know what? The thirty thousand I'm going to get from FEMA to raise my house. That's right. not going to go very far. We've right. got to raise those. And houses, so now, as the New York stuff. Rising program, yeah. you know what, what we're encouraging everybody to do is, you've got to be in the program in order to get the money to yeah. to do your house the right way, whether it means lifting or or whatever it means for each individual home, but to to take the necessary steps uh, and get the resources um, and get through all that red tape in order to build the house the right way. But then there's also the hospital and in, in making yeah. sure that as a barrier island, we have a 911 receiving emergency room, which is something that our city council has put as top priority. Mm -hmm. And it's really a no brainer, right? right? For a community that's a barrier island yeah. that has bridges and those bridges go up, when, uh, when you call an ambulance, you need to make sure that um, if you're gonna be able to get to the hospital in a reasonable, um, amount of time and so our hospital now which is not under the control of the city of Long Beach right. is merging with South Nassau and we're looking for that process to go forward as quickly as possible but when you get to the bigger picture when you look at five years mm -hmm. from now in Long Beach I think we're looking at being the model of resiliency and sustainability um, and having you know a housing stock that that is wonderful a population that is um, continuing to to look at Long Beach as the mm -hmm. place to be and it ought to be the place to be I mean it's it's such an incredible place so let me ask live. you a, a question we only have about 60 seconds is the community as excited as you are and I say that um, coming from an area that was also hit but nothing like Long Beach because people are exhausted people yeah. are tired but the, but the, but if they could see if you will uh, the promise of this future and they see it actually happening it's an exciting time to think that this city is going to be rebuilt in a way that will last a hundred years right. um, and it's going to make what was always a great city even right. better it's been such a difficult time for the city um, since the storm and yet Everybody, I think, sees the promise of such good days ahead. We, we know we have so much to do. We've got to get everybody the resources they need to get back mm -hmm. in their homes, and that's the right. slog every day, and the dealing with right. the hospital and all the other pieces of the critical infrastructure back together. But that vision is out there, and everybody sees it. Everybody sees what our Barrier and, Island and, can and be. And your job is to keep it, and, and your job is to, is to keep that moving. Uh, both on a day-to-day -day basis, but know where that goal right. is. Know, We're going to get know. to the vision that the city council has laid out of stronger, smarter. Well, you know, I, I give you a lot of credit. I give the city council and the people of Long Beach all the credit and, and the public officials from the Obama administration to Governor Cuomo and the county executive and yeah. Senator Schumer because none of this can happen by and itself. Senator Scalos and, and our Wies okay. uh, Harvey Wiesenberg. Jack <laughs> and Harvey Wiesenberg. And that's going to do it for this edition of MTL. I'm Pat Halpin, help again, helping you once again meet the leaders. Check out On Demand on Optimum TV Channel 500. It's where you can catch the latest primetime shows on demand anytime you want, and it's included with your Optimum TV service. Shows from NBC, Fox, CBS, and ABC. Start exactly when you say so.
check out On Demand on Optimum TV Channel 500. It's where you can watch the hottest TV shows on demand anytime you want, and it's included with your Optimum TV service. Shows from networks like AMC, TBS, TNT, and Lifetime. Start exactly when you say so.